The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer-to-peer. Good morning, good morning. GM. Howdy, what's going Howdy. on, man? I was chilling, enjoying a lovely Saturday morning, as they all are. Nice. Well, uh, hopefully you're still enjoying it. You know, it's hilarious because gambling is is how all this got started in Formosa. Like these guys started out gambling, and they're like, "Man, um, they're not uh, they're not really down with the Bitcoin and the transparency." So they had to go to Monero. Exactly. Then they started a little a little WhatsApp WhatsApp group where they were trading uh, fiat for Monero to gamble on it. Um, so yeah, we're we're, try- we're trying to build off that momentum. Dude, these guys haven't figured out. <laughs> I guess you wouldn't ideally use WhatsApp for that, but you know, like they're doing, they have yeah. their own local Monero, like in their own local community, basically. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And it or- organically started. Latin America gonna... is all WhatsApp. I don't know why, but everyone here just loves WhatsApp. Everybody's WhatsApp. Like it's like the main, like if you're communicating with a, with an abuela or like a, whatever it is, everybody's on WhatsApp down there. It's like unbelievable. It's unbelievable. When in Rome, or as they say. Oh, that's another thought too. We'll we'll be posting a little documentary we made of my trip there. It's like an hour long. Uh, we paid somebody from from the town to actually put the video together. Uh, it's pretty much complete. We'll be posting that soon. So that's pretty cool. You can see what the experience was like in Monero Town. Sweet. Well, how are things going? A little bit. In Priceland, man, I, yeah, I've, I haven't really been paying close attention to price. I got to be honest. Uh, what's what is going on? Is there any action, or it's just kind of yeah? There's slow there's setting. been some uh, some lines broken. A little bit of optimism. Um, obviously, you know, Bitcoin's about to break a million pretty soon. Pr- probably like anywhere between one month and never. <laughs> Bro, I'm saying tomorrow. <laughs> Come on, have some faith here. I, yeah. I hear Dara. I hear Darrow's about to skyrocket. I hear Darrow's about to take <laughs> off. We're actually we'll going to cover that. I don't know. Uh, Luke must have like, he must be one of three triplets or something that are all genius. Like, I know. What is this everything. stuff? How, this guy is my freaking hero. Oh my God. He's like, he, he, unbelievable. Like, oh, well, I'll do some full chain membership proofs, but in my spare time, I'll just, um, I'll just find the, the flaws with Darrow and, and expose their, their bad practices like <laughs> and, and then they're like complaining i'm just, I'm like, just picturing him on his computer like, <laughs> <It's just> like <laughs> and then they're complaining at him like why film. haven't you wrote the full exploit to de-anonymize the whole chain in a script to make everything it's like bro i just showed you like yeah i just de-anonymized a few transactions like here's your proof of concept write your own goddamn script and then at the same time he complains that he didn't properly disclose when he when he attempted to multiple times clearly <laughs> Yeah, we've we've got that here on our on our second tab today, <laughs> and then we'll take a look at what what Daryl Price did after that. That, that um, guy but, you know, who's that out there tweeting about it? I don't know what's his name. What's his uh, screen name? I don't remember. Uh, the I'm one, always surprised before. at how many Daryl people are out there. Well, the guy that the it. guy that made the bet that made the bet with Luke, and then Luke de-anonymized his Technique transaction. Twenty four. He he's the worst individual on the internet right now. He is such a piece of shit, this guy. And he's still he's still out there now tweeting Darrow, like, oh, this is good for Darrow. Uh no. Monero Monero people are scam he's calling Luke a scammer. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Bags, the Odass- man. Bags and bias. It's pretty oh my funny. God. It's it's hard we'll to watch. We'll cover that on the news segment. Yeah, so anybody who's out there who's into Darrow, you know, I I, I understand you, you you got wrapped up in things, and that's cool, you know. Uh, follow the tech, um, but realize, like, you know, th- don't don't get brainwashed by by, by these freaking fools. That being said, um, we may we may have Darrow at Monerotopia because we've been. I actually spoke to somebody in the community yesterday. We had a call planned, and then uh, Luke. Luke literally nuked Dara like an hour before the phone call. <laughs> so I was like, holy shit. But uh, yeah, welcome to have ha- if people if they want to come and, you know, act like uh, act like gentlemen or gentle gentle ladies uh, come and present their tech 
and and be a sponsor, right? We justify this by them being a sponsor. So you're you're contributing to the privacy tech space. You're contributing to Monero and Monerotopia by being a sponsor, helping making the conference possible. Um, you know, we'll we'll draw the line somewhere. We're not going to let you just come talk about any old crap. But Darrow, for the fact is, there's a large, you know, decent. I actually I don't know how large, but there's a, a group of people out there. They are very much into Darrow. Um, there's, you know, people that are making claims about it. Obviously, we know that there's some vital flaws, but if you want to come talk about it, present it, air it out in the open, you will be highly criticized. You're going to get questioned. Uh, but maybe what comes out of that is the building of some respect for the project if there is anything legitimate about it. So, yeah, you're still welcome to participate in Monerotopia. Sell your Darrow. Sponsor Monerotopia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I talk, the guy I talked to yesterday, he was saying, so they think that Darrow was started by Thankful for Today. I was like, okay, I don't, I don't know. This is, this, is, this is all these like, like stories in Darrow land. I mean, there's some pretty hardcore believers, apparently. I never really stopped to take a good look at it. I'll, I'll be honest with you, but mostly because I, I saw the, the trolling and the fucking craziness. I was like, you know, it's, these guys come across like a bunch of scammers. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if there's any legitimacy at, in their tech whatsoever. Whatsoever. I mean, do you guys know? Are they doing anything interesting that? I actually I had an idea about um, about Monero scaling and homomorphic encryption. So Darrow's claim to fame is homomorphic encryption. Um, apparently, it's it's not really like robust in certain ways. Um, at least that's like what misleading. I read from. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's not like. But I had an idea about. So we had we had my Monero for a long time, and. Let's suppose that Monero does scale. Let's suppose we do 100x or 1,000x more transactions per day, right? Let's suppose we're doing like 2 million transactions a day. And there's still going to be a bit of a problem on mobile in terms of scanning all the blocks. So I had this idea, could homomorphic encryption be used to send an encrypted version of your private view key to, um, let's just say, Cake Wallet? And then Cake Wallet performs some set of operations, again, homomorphic, homomorphic operations where you're picking out blocks or transactions for people that match, but you don't know which transactions or you don't know necessarily which blocks. Mm. There'd have to be some kind of like obfuscation. Like you'd have to probably encrypt the transactions before performing those operations so that you didn't know which transaction was what, you know, on your own servers. Um, it's kind of like a fanciful idea at the moment. I spent maybe an hour kind of trying to think about it, but I thought, hey, maybe maybe we could actually provide a centralized service, um, which probably you'll just be a money laundering money transmitter. Um, but <laughs> that aside, could a central service be provided where you're you're using homomorphic encryption and a private view key to pick out transactions for users and then just serving up those transactions to them? Mm, okay, interesting. Yeah, there's I'm a lot of interesting stuff like that that would, could could potentially be enabled by homomorphic encryption for something like that. Though personally, I'm more bullish on the new view key. I think that'll that'll like. Are, are, wait, are they are they crypto note based in any way, Dara? Oh, um, I don't know. I don't question. think because so. this guy. I mean, this the, the this guy's claim. The, like they're claiming that thankful for today is was part of Dara. I see Tech Leaks twenty four is running a space on Twitter. Is that happening now? Get let's get him on Monero Topia. Somebody wants to go out there and message him. Tell me, yeah, can you jump can literally on literally join as, as a, a guest on a stream right now. Yeah, you could you could come up. Well, you know, we're you welcome to have you as long as long as you don't act like a like a freaking jerk. You're you're more than welcome to come up on stage. Tell tell us your story, how you got, <laughs> how how you stole ten thousand dollars <laughs> from Luke. By the way, I mean that that's the shittiest part of this. This guy. Wait, how much is Darrow worth? He said ten thousand Darrow, which is oh ten thousand uh, Darrow. Like so what is 20, that? It's 000, like two twenty five thousand dollars. Would have been oh, thirty thousand wow. yesterday, but you know, stuff happened. All right. Well, it, it might it might only be a few bucks if you if you give it a few more days. <laughs> we unfortunately see this a lot in a lot of projects, and, and in a lot of ways, this is this is a way you can you can tell a legitimate project from a bullshit project. Do they pay out the people? Um, do they pay out their bug bounties that they post? So many projects do not pay out bug bounties, and they're like, oh, it's not a real bug, or oh, this was already known, or come up mm -hmm. with some some lame excuse 
Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm just looking, I'm looking to see if he's actually giving a space. Oh, he is. Yeah, he's in a spaces right now. Yeah, guys, try try to get him on. If anybody wants to jump in that spaces and tell him to to come over to Monerotopia, we'll we'll bring him up on stage. All right, buddy, take it away. Okay, let's go to um, let's start with the Monero price. Um, yeah, so this is kind of the long term chart. We're looking at the two day here. Um, we've you'll notice that we had we were just lowering and like the the compression of volatility was happening happening until that delisting. Um, but at the moment, you know, things are basically back in that same range, right? We're, we're back up to $136 as of today, um, which is effectively in the same range that we've been in for man, two years now. Um, so that's a good sign. Um, they hit us with a sledgehammer well, in terms of price, but obviously nothing changed with the network. Um, but, you know, they, they really did try and uh, achieve maximum price fuckery. Uh, with that delisting, and we're we're getting like really really close to to full recovery here. Um, the most beautiful thing about this chart would be if we just continue to stair step slowly um, back up into the range here, and uh, and overall that that basically that delisting meant nothing for price. That would kind of be my ideal scenario. In a lot of ways, um, in in some ways, I do think it's good and better if our price doesn't have massive um, volatility. It would be better for cryptocurrency overall to be slowly adopted. Um, with with steadily rising price, with th that that helps merchants, that helps adoption, that helps real world usage, you know, because no one wants to think, hey, I'm going to get paid in Monero uh, next week, but damn, I hope, um, <laughs> you know, I, I hope that it doesn't jump two x in price before I get paid, um, or you know, vice versa, I paid someone and, and now it jumped two x in price and and I could have I could have paid half as much. Um, that kind of action really really does lead to. Oh, just degenerate gambling. Like that's that's the kind of thing that it tends to produce. So, um, uh, and obviously that's that's probably something that the the cabal would love. That's that's one thing I think they have induced a lot of this volatility. Um, whether that's for their own gain because they're like crypto insider cabal, or whether they're like um, deep state entities that want to sort of wreck the potential uh, for digital freedom money and then distract you with things like number go up and then cloak it in in things like um, <laughs> in things like uh, uh, value preservation, right? And, 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 uh, at number go up, right? Okay. So anyways, um, yeah, you're kind of seeing here that Monero is getting just back into the bottom of these orange bands. I wouldn't say that we're necessarily out of the danger zone yet. Like in terms of the technical analysis, I wouldn't say we're, we're exactly out of the danger zone yet here because, um, you know, we, we've kind of, we've come back up to this orange zone in a lot of cases, you can see where it'll tag that and then come back down. Um, this might actually be a good indication or, or, or a good, a good moment where it's like, a good illustration of how, where your techn technical analysis can break down specifically for reasons of what's happening in the fundamental market or what's happening in psychologically, right? The delisting um, and then probably whatever fuckery was going on with price in the background there. Because you know that these guys knew about the delisting ahead of time and that there were certain people that probably took large advantage of that. So this is a good example of where um, technical analysis might not be as strong, uh, as strongly suited for um, you know, for, for an asset. So everything has its limitations. Just, just know what you're dealing with when you're looking at technical analysis. Um, in, in, in the line of technical analysis, we broke this nice little pipeline here over the past week. Um, really we broke it. I think it was last week that we broke it. Um, but we continue to hold above it. So that's a good sign. Um, we also are seeing a little bit of a rebound now on the Monero XMR BTC price. Um, things were good as Bitcoin was going down, and then Bitcoin, we'll, we'll look at this in a second, but Bitcoin decided to take a little bit of a pump um, th this past week. So obviously, if, if Bitcoin's going to go up, um, we're going to see the reverse action in XMR BTC, but that's true of basically all crypto, right? As the crypto market cap goes up, as total goes up, um, the ratio of XMR BTC goes down. Um, it, that's just how that game is played. So <clears throat> this is still basically, as we've talked about, a very long-term bottoming pattern. We are still very much looking at some point um, to rebound uh, at least to these lower lines. That's almost certainly going to happen at some point. So it's a matter of when um, I'm still, you know, we're still kind of looking for, for tail risk increases. We're still kind of far off away from that. Um, we had some macro signals that were a bit confused um, at last week. They, they started getting a bit confused. Uh, so maybe, maybe at some point here, we're going to try and, and call a top. I think that it's, it's very possible that we're, we're getting somewhere close to a top. But at the moment, things are still looking a little bit optimistic, even if the signals are slightly confused. 
Uh, this is XMR versus Ethereum. We've actually had a significantly better rebound versus Ethereum, uh, 30%. Still, still this thing, uh, you know, we've got a long way to go. Uh, another 30% really to, to at least tag what would be a reasonable, a reasonable um, uh, resistance, um, would be resistance. So, yeah, I mean, we're still keeping an eye on that. Um, maybe we could look at the XMR dominance. We haven't looked at that in a while. So XMR dominance, this is on the weekly. It, this is actually, believe it or not, most coins, their dominance um, uh, against crypto basically goes down forever because there's always new cryptos being released and there's always new bullshit out there. So pretty much every coin has their dominance go down forever. Um, and that might even be true of Bitcoin. We'll have to wait and see for the next bull market and see how things unfold. As, as bad as ETH is looking against Bitcoin right now, we'll take a look at that in a second. But um, I tend to think that that ETH is going to have a big comeback if there's some big, uh, big bull market. Um, but at any rate, uh, Monero kind of looks to, again, also here on the dominance chart, be forming a little bit of a bottoming pattern. Things have finally chilled out enough um, to form some lower standard deviation bands on the short term time frames. So, again, this also looks like something that in a reasonable world, in a sane world, Monero would tag the underside of this um, of these lower of these long term lower standard deviation bands. So we'll see if that can actually happen or not. Who knows? Um, I think it will probably eventually, and that'll probably be correlated to some sort of pullback in the markets. Um, here we're looking at the the price divergences and uh, nothing to see here. Everything basically oscillating around the zero point. Even Poloniex has somehow found it in their hearts to stop fucking with the price uh, so badly and, and, and pushing it down to <laughs> minus five, minus 10% like they usually are. So I'm not sure what's wrong. Maybe... Um, Maybe Justin's son caught COVID or something like that. You know, maybe he's sick and just hasn't had time to fuck with the Monero price. Uh, only he would know. So anyways, uh, things looking kind of boring on that front and boring on this chart is good. Um, let's take a look at that Luke Parker tweet where he talks about the de-anonymization of Darrow. So um, um, I don't understand exactly. <laughs> this shit's too smart for me. Um, but apparently he's done something and effectively proven it, um, how, how they broke the privacy. In my mind, this whole thing with Darrow, the, the biggest takeaway from this for me is that, as I've told you guys before, I'm a pleb. Maybe I'm an advanced pleb, right? I can do some cool math stuff here and there. Um, but I'm not a dev. I'm not a cryptographer. I'm not, you know, I'm not at that level. So what do I do for judging projects? I look at things like their best practices and the peripheral signs of what they're doing as a project. Darrow, early on, First of all, they spent an entire year with their, where their code was closed and no one could see it, and they were running a production network that they were encouraging people to use. Um, and then one thing that they did, as Monero was developing bulletproofs and still waiting on the completion of the math audit, Darrow integrated bulletproofs into their code, into their production code before the completion of the math audit. That's, that's not just like, <laughs> in some cases you're like, well, that's not best practices. This is a horrible practice. Like, that's horrible fucking practice. You don't do that, especially when you're rolling your own crypto. Like, rolling your own crypto is one of the most difficult things that you can do. And Darrow doesn't have a big team of people that are reviewing all this stuff. There, I think it's just one or two guys. I mean, I'm not exactly sure, but I don't want to say it's just one guy. I'm sure they'll come in and be like, we got all these other developers. Like, okay, UX aside, right? Developing the wallet and, and, uh, and, and correcting typos on the GitHub doesn't count as development. Um, and I would levy that same criticism at Bitcoin in a lot of ways, um, although they do have a very large uh, developer base. Don't get me wrong. Um, but their protocol, uh, you know, the people that actually can sign off on protocol level changes in Bitcoin are, are fairly small. Uh, but in terms of Darrow, they really don't have um, at least maybe they got some new ones, but they for a long, long time, they didn't have hardly any devs at all. So it's like you guys integrated a new crypto protocol or an, an, a new crypto thing. You're rolling your own crypto and the math thought it isn't even done. This is a peripheral sign. This is a bad practices sign. And it's like, I can't go review your code and your crypto, but I do know what, what best practices look like. And that's not it, bros. And also y'all don't have enough developers. So you know what? I'm just going to stay away from this protocol. Maybe if you want to leverage it for some like, um, you know, DJ and trading or whatever. Sure. Okay. Right. Like I, I get that there's plenty of projects and probably most of them are just utter crap uh, and they still go up in price a lot. That's fine. But in terms of like, is this going to be a good project? Should we like think, um, you know, should we get involved with it? Should we give it our time, effort and attention? Man, no, like not not when you do crap like that. Not when you integrate bulletproofs before the math audit is done. That just tells me you're probably taking shortcuts all over the place. And that's just the one that we saw, right? You shake a haystack and a needle falls out. You wonder how many other needles might be in that haystack. So um, anyways, yeah, that happened with Darrow and they had a, a little bit of a price 
drop recently as a result of that. Just a mere we, 60%. We, I think we got tech leaks is going to be joining us, actually, bodies. <laughs> this should, okay, this cool. Get well, fun. maybe he can respond to that. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit harsh, bro. But um, but you know, like, come on, like that that does. It's not harsh. Much. It's not harsh at all, man. It's not harsh. I mean, at it's all. just the yeah. truth. Sometimes you know, yeah. sometimes. Um, but anyways, yeah. So their price took a bit of a tumble uh, to the tune of about sixty percent here. This chart doesn't look like a very good chart to me. Um, I think I remember we were talking about. Yeah, actually, it was a, it was a month or two ago. Someone asked about Tarot, and um, and I said, yeah. I mean, unless you've got some inside information, it's it's hard to say that you know if this chart's going to break out or not. And then, like the next week, um, <laughs> in the span of one week, it it pumped to the tune of a little over two x. Uh, and now it's coming right back down again, right? So this this thing has gone all the way from the top here um, and, and has basically rode the bottom, even as plenty of other coins are up to a significant degree and off of their lows to a significant degree. This thing looks like it wants to break down here even further. So um, personally, uh, this isn't the time for bravery. And again, unless you have inside knowledge, inside information, you you just know that um, Justin... What do you Sun think it will go some... down to? Like, what are the charts showing? Like, where would it... Oh, like, um, Let's take a look at some wave. I always like to use wave magic um, for, for that kind of stuff. Let's go to the daily so we can get some more clear lines. Um, yeah, maybe you could probably go down all the way here to 0.882 cents, it looks like. Um, wow. Let's try what was this high? This chart a bit more. 30 bucks? Uh, sorry, one second. Hi, made it to $26. Currently sitting at about 90% down off its all-time highs from 2021. Uh, this thing certainly does look in a lot of ways like it wants to break down. Like it came down here, tried to form a bottom, pumped. It's flirting with these lower standard deviation lines. It pumped to those, you know, a very prominent area, very prominent statistical area, and then came right back down here. So Daryl Chart is currently in danger of, of the bottom falling out to another 60% potentially down to, um, down to 80 cents. Um, there's also, like, if you're really optimistic, you would maybe try and... Um, you would maybe try and call this area right here uh, in red. You would maybe try and say, hey, we could they could find some support down there, which would be a little bit coincidental with the lower standard deviation bands. Um, yeah, I mean, if I was if I was just going to DJ and trade this thing, I would probably be looking for this area as, as an opportunity for a swing trade. There's probably going to be other opportunities as well on the way down. Maybe these red these red bands right here. Um, Wave magic doesn't always like work perfectly well when you're in kind of free fall situations. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that's what Darrow's looking like. Um, uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, I hope TechLeak heard some of my criticisms about including bulletproofs, and maybe he can tell us what their developer situation looks like. But um, bro, like including including you're rolling your own crypto that's really dangerous, and we have to do it in crypto. But um, you know you should be using best practices. So please tell All me right, why he, I'm wrong on that one. <laughs> yeah, he's he's backstage now, so we we can bring <laughs> him up. Um, do we want to do this now or? Why don't you, you we, got more we, price report, buddy? Yeah, yeah, I've got, I've got. Okay, do your thing. Here. We, we got to look at silver. There was some, some cool silver stuff going on. Um, okay. Oh, you know, let's take a look at Xano as well. Unfortunately, Xano is also like experiencing um, quite, quite its own dip here. Um, I say unfortunately, but ha I mean, this is a brand new coin. So if you didn't catch that Xano wave on the first one, and you're like interested to speculate on the, on the latest privacy coin, um, it's looking like you'll probably have an opportunity to do that. Um, here in the near future, maybe this in this moving average right here. This is probably a good area um, to scoop some up. This is the kind of play, guys. Like, don't do not put fucking like twenty or thirty percent of your net worth into Xano. It could work out for you. Okay, it could work out for you if your net worth is like you know a thousand dollars. Then okay, <laughs> maybe you'll put a couple hundred dollars. But if your net worth is in the six figures plus, do not do not put a shitload of cash onto this coin. This is a new coin. This is a cool project. We like it. We like the guy that's that's leading it. Um, but you know, this is the kind of thing you put a percent onto. You put a couple percent onto, you know, maybe even up to five percent if you're crazy. But, um, anyways, yeah, you might have the opportunity to pick some 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 Xano up here. And when you do it, um, like if you're gonna do that, I would say just hold it for a long time. Just just plan to hold it for like a year or two uh, at least. These are the kinds of coins that can can go from something low and do a hundred x in the next kind of like broadly um, bullish scenario. So. Um, that would be my thinking on this coin, probably worth a, you know, some small allocation. And then that small allocation could actually become some significant percentage of your stack, um, in a, in a very positive situation. Um, right Once now, again, you know, yeah, Zano, Zano will be at Monerotopia this year. That's confirmed. So that should be cool. The team will be there. Most excellent. 
looking if, okay, if Darrow let's... joins as well, that should that should be some interesting <laughs> interaction. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm interested to hear too um if if there's like conversations between uh Dark Fi um and Darrow, you know. Oh, okay, there you go. Maybe maybe uh, Rachel O'Leary has some things. Dark Fi, yes, yeah, they'll be comment. participating as well. So let's take a look. Um, you know what? Before we talk about Bitcoin, let's talk about silver and gold. Um, no, no, no. Just kidding. Actually, let's 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 finish off with crypto first. Uh, okay, so yeah, Bitcoin actually had a um, little bit of a pump this week, as we talked about, about ten percent. Um, that, that, that's nice. Was it ten percent this week? Yeah, we're on an eight-hour chart here, so um, that's looking pretty good. Um, it broke the, uh, sort of the main pleb line down here. Although, uh, you know, don't necessarily be fooled. We kind of saw the same action here where we, we, this, this pleb line was broken and then things fell to the bottom side. Maybe we can go to the daily, the daily charts are usually better about, um, yeah, you can kind of see this, this break was weakness. It broke it. It fell back below. It broke it. And then it looked like it was going to sustain. And then just, you know, the bottom came out. So this actually is looking ever so slightly more clean in terms of the break of that line. You had the first day it broke. The second day it it went down, but it stayed above the line, right? It wicked down into the line and then closed higher, and then immediately followed with with the next green candle. This is kind of what we were talking about last week in terms of how does price action unfold, and you can get sort of an intuition about what's strength and what is not strength. Um, in this case, this price action looks a little bit like strength. I'm not saying that the next you know leg up to 100k is is incipient or anything, but this definitely has a little bit of a feel. Um, a little bit more strength than than previously. Uh, at the same time, I would look at this chart and I would tell you that this upper standard deviation bands right here is probably going to pose some kind of resistance. In fact, um, if the situation was going to be bullish, I would want to see price responsibly wait just a moment here, like, you know, come up into this area, have some problems, maybe bounce above, kind of rest down here, say, okay, uh, things are looking good and then start to move to the upside. That would be that would be reasonable, organic looking looking price action. Um, if we see this thing and Bitcoin doesn't have reasonable, responsible, organic looking price action anymore, unfortunately. But from what we've seen in Bitcoin, this stupid shit could just go like this, like just straight to the upside and find some some major um, some major resistance here. One thing, and again, one reason I say is like reasonable, sustainable, organic price action at finding resistance at the spots that it should and then continuing up is that's sustainable. That kind of price action can be sustained over longer periods of time. But when things just scam pump to the upside, it's like by the time you've realized it's pump and you want to get long, that most of the price action has already happened, right? That's, that's an unfortunate reality of markets and especially of crypto markets that are uh, more scammy than, than other ones. Um, at any rate, um, so one thing that I would be looking for here is for the purple lines to act as some kind of resistance in any kind of bullish situation here. The interesting thing is that we've got these, these short-term purple lines. And again, they're, upper, they're, they're a derivation of upper standard deviation. They're a way of sort of looking a little bit higher on charts that tend to go exponential. So I would be very much looking for these purple lines right here um, to be some kind of some kind of place where uh, a resistance could happen if 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 things make it that far. And then one other interesting thing that you'll see here is that the very very long term um, uh, derivation of upper standard deviation here again the purple bands. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that these longer term purple bands are also sort of coincident in a lot of ways with the shorter term bands. So I personally. I personally have problems thinking Bitcoin in this current situation is going to 100,000. That, I mean, it, it, that doesn't mean that it couldn't, right? It, it, it very well could, but um, I still, I just, I don't like, I don't like what's developing on the macro situation. Um, the signals are looking a bit confused again. Um, and it just, you know, I, I mean, it's got the ETF, so maybe that thing can drive it further, but I just don't see how the organic action is going to drive that. Um, it seems like Bitcoin has everything going for it. It's had all the opportunities. It's had it's had everything. Like, if it's going to make it there, it's not going to be on the on the back of organic action. There could be some component of organic action, but it's it will be on the back of leverage for sure if it makes it that high. So, um, you know, whatever. Uh, it is what it is. Bitcoin is still doing pretty good. Um, Let's take a look at uh, at the shit coins really quick. One thing that um, has caught my eye here is Link. Link is now pumped to the top side. Um, 
pretty good, uh, at least in terms of you know how it performs. Again, these are Z-scores. Z-scores tell you how well uh, an asset is performing relative to its moving average. In this case, we're looking at the 100-day moving average. I always get this wrong. Um, is it the 100-day? Yeah, we're looking here at the 100-day moving average. So this chart tells you how well each of these coins is performing relative to its own 100-day moving average. So Link here um, has pumped um, to three standard deviations, which is you know, pretty high. One thing that I've told you guys before is that I see Link often pump ahead of everything else. And then, and then um, soon after, like within a week or two, everything else will start pumping to the upside as well. So right now we're getting that signal again where Link is pumping to the upside. Um, and then we've also got Bitcoin here. Like we said, this chart has the feel of strength um, right now, at least in the short term. Um, so those two things combined together, uh, you might you might say, hey, you know, there there could be another leg up here uh, coming for crypto. That doesn't mean necessarily a 50 percent or a 2x leg up, um, but we could see a recovery back, um, you know, back close to the previous um, their previous highs, maybe probably even a little bit further than that. So um, uh, and then we'll we'll finish off the broad crypto world here with Ethereum. Um, Ethereum right now is uh, this chart looks bad. Uh, there's no two ways about this. This this chart, Ethereum versus Bitcoin, looks pretty bad. Um, there is some kind of deadline coming for the Ethereum ETF um, in the next, I think it's like week, two weeks. I can't remember. I should have wrote that down. At any rate, um, Ethereum is going to get some kind of disposition over the ETF. Um, I wouldn't expect it to get approved. However, keep in mind that Ethereum has the same futures-based ETF that Bitcoin. It, Bitcoin and Ethereum were both approved in 2021 for a futures-based ETF. So um, it's going to be difficult for the SEC to be like, well, it's it's uh, it's too dangerous to give it a spot ETF, considering all the court cases that happened. Um, but remember, this is a game. This is a show. This is a play. It's a drama. They're 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 using this to to jerk around emotions, right? It's not surprising that Bitcoin would be the spotlight, and then ETF has got to go through the same legal battles that Bitcoin did, and eventually Ethereum will come victorious, and you know then they'll get their mega pump as well. Like this is all maximum emotion, maximum hype, maximum drama for the maximum value extraction of the people that try to trade these markets. Gensler knows what he's doing. Um, the crypto cabal knows what they're doing. Um, all of the all of the fuckheads in charge of these exchanges, or at least most of them, um, almost certainly are part of this, or at least are aware of it at a bare minimum. Um, so at the moment, um, Ethereum actually at the moment, I would I would be saying, hey, there are probably opportunities to scoop up um, some deals here. That doesn't mean that this thing is done falling. It still doesn't look very good. Um, but it could be possible that just the uncertain markets hate uncertainty. Just remember that markets hate uncertainty. So with the disposition of one of the submitted Ethereum spot ETFs in the near future, um, this fall could be really related um, to that uncertainty. It could be that once that uncertainty resolves and we know that either some court cases are about to happen or if Ethereum gets approved, if Ethereum gets approved, guys, look out for new highs in crypto total market cap. Look out for new pump of new coins. If the Ethereum ETF gets approved, everything is shifting Ethereum. I mean, it's pro like honestly, if you're a trader, it's probably worth finding somewhere here to pick up some Ethereum, um, even if you love Bitcoin, right? Just just responsibly, just like you know, number go up. I mean, <laughs> we, we get the same stuff from the laser eyes all the time. They're always showing us price charts. Right now, they're showing us the Ethereum price chart, and they don't realize it, but this is opportunity. This is very likely opportunity. Um, things don't go up in a straight line. Neither do they go down in a straight line. Um, this thing has had a very long, um, kind of burn off from the past bull market. So at some point, Ethereum ETF is going to be approved. It's going to happen. It could be sooner. It could be later. When that happens, Ethereum is going to make a big move to the upside. Um, and it's very possible that could be the beginning of Ethereum actually attaining market cap parity with Bitcoin. Um, I won't go on a rant about that. We have um, plenty of other cool things, uh, other cool people to talk today about stuff um let's just finish that, off i would start eat, eat into bitcoin's use case as the one and only kind of store of value too right i mean yeah yeah i mean that's the an ethereum gaining market cap with bitcoin basically invalidates a lot of maxi arguments in one fell swoop i would love to see ethereum gain market cap with bitcoin because they're the same to me asics are no different to me than proof of stake um, it, it's the same fucking thing, uh, especially given how narrowly controlled the, the mining ecosystem is there, especially given the fact that it looks like a single entity is responsible for producing 
about 60 to 70% of the blocks, even though they have different pools, they all use the same entity for producing blocks, which of course they do. Um, Bitmain took over the, the ASIC um, industry a long time ago. Um, and just a whole bunch of like things changed. And I mean, there's like, we've talked about them a lot, the fundamental reasons for why, like, for example, Ethereum has Tether on Tether, which Bitcoin maxis love Tether, but it's not on Bitcoin. Like, okay, tiny, but like, there's no real volume of Tether on Bitcoin. So it's weird that you get all these maxis like talking about Tether being good <laughs> when it, when it benefits Ethereum. Oh, and by the way, Tether is, has stolen the, the, um, the, the medium of exchange from Bitcoin and Ethereum layer twos are crushing Bitcoin in every way possible. Like there's more volume, there's more total locked value. Like just everything about Ethereum is just crushing Bitcoin except for one metric and that's price. So, um, yeah, I mean, I could rant about that for a while, but you know, we won't, we won't go there. Um, don't want to, don't want to slow the show down, but, what do you um, mean, bro, Bitcoin's going to 10 bajillion dollars. Of course. I forgot about that. How could I have forgotten? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I always forget about that. Of course. Probably. I, you. I mean, hyper Bitcoinization is going to eat all of the um, derivatives values, not just the real world value, but also the derivative values that's in like the hundreds of quadrillions of dollars, which means obviously something like a one quadrillion dollar price for Bitcoin. <sighs> Man, how? No second best. Guess, uh, Michael Saylor. Sell your bags, bros. Sell your bags. Digi it's all Bitcoin digital energy. Right now. What about yep. GameStop? Particularly GameStop. <laughs> oh yeah, I the, thank you for reminding me about that. I totally forgot. Yeah, the the game stonk. Um, there was a there was it was it was fun in 2021. Um, Reddit got together. It, GameStop is not a particularly like good business. It's not like a particularly impressive business in it by any means. Um, but with the uh, with the shutdown of the economy back in 2021, everyone was spec not everyone but um certain players like. They're called Citadel. Um, uh, a big hedge fund named Citadel was betting on the destruction of GameStop. And if GameStop didn't self-implode, they were going to kind of help to make sure that it did that anyways by fucking with the stock market. But all the bros from the 80s and 90s like myself that were like, no, GameStop was, uh, we loved GameStop before, you know, Amazon. Uh, that's where you would go to get the latest games and the coolest stuff. And and uh, and so everyone has this nostalgia about it. Reddit, um, who's collectively composed of Neckbeard's um, uh, Gen Xers, um, decided that they were going to do a coordinated pump against the GameStop shorts and wreck them. And so the mother of all short squeezes was going to happen, the Moaz. And uh, and it actually did. They fucking 100 x that shit. Actually, let's just pull up the, the price. Yeah, that was insane. They made a movie. Of it. Have you seen the movie? It was pretty fun. I didn't. That would probably be pretty fun. So, okay, we got GameStop here. Watching. GameStop did... Jesus Christ. <laughs> GameStop did 100x. Um, wow, okay, so I, I'm, uh, that was at the end of 2020. Wow, okay, not even 2021. Yeah, GameStop did 100x as the uh, as the Gen X, Gen X neckbeards on Reddit decided to pump the shit out of this thing and wreck the shorts. Um, so, yeah, some billionaires took some pretty heavy hits, and then... Um, it there was maybe the possibility that this thing could have actually taken down the system in a way that was completely unexpected. So um, with all me with all manner of fraud and crime, um, the inside cabal put a stop to this and effectively capped GameStop. Um, but they reorganized after you know four years. They um, uh, got their forces back together and and they put another six x on the table. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, but guys. Listen, just if you are, it was all it was all because that guy started like tweeting about it again or something, right? Or talking yeah. about it. Yeah, I mean, at this Kitty point, you've got to suspect that. about what kind of con they had a games like they had a GME Reddit, and then they had to pivot to another one because that got taken over. Um, you have to suspect at this point that insiders are probably involved in trying to create the social momentum to create these new um, these new Moaz pumps. Um, but the Moaz never really happened. Like hundred X happens in crypto. A Moaz is more like ten thousand x, right? They were gonna, they were a Moaz meant like a, a price of infinity, effectively. So, what I'm, what I'm getting at here, guys, is if you are a GameStop, GameStonk aficionado, if you like the stonk, you, that that's fine. But they proved that they would use all manner of fraud and crime to stop this thing from from actually getting the Moaz. It's it's never going to Moaz, guys. Like, I'm sorry if anyone here, you know, is a GameStop, pr probably not. But if you are, like. You're playing with fire. Could this thing go higher? Yeah, of course it could. This thing next week could open and, and do some crazy shit. But man, and last time this happened, basically all exchanges uh, halted like purchases. And even some of the exchanges were selling people's shares. 
Yeah, this is the nature of, um, of naked shorts. Um, yeah, so they, the, they, they halted, like you said, they halted trading because um, it was going up too much. Um, and then they call them synthetic shares. You can, these guys, they, they have a, a special law carved out for them. The, the market makers, the, um, you know, the guys that provide the liquidity in, in, in markets, uh, Citadel is one of these guys, one of these such players. They are allowed, they say for immediate, the laws for immediate liquidity purposes only, you are allowed to sell shares that you don't actually have um, to provide liquidity to the market. And it's supposed to be in a, like a very short term kind of thing. And then you balance your books later. But technically, apparently, the law doesn't force them to balance their books later. It just basically says, hey, you can do this short term. You can create synthetic shares that don't actually exist and then sell them to plebs on the market. And that's exactly what happened to Monero in a very similar way with Binance when they created Monero from nothing and said, hey, here's a Monero that's, um, you know, this this we have a we have a database entry that represents one Monero for you, sir. Uh, and for all of you people buying Monero on Binance, but they never actually acquired that Monero because it would require them buying That's it. I, I always thought there would be a, a potentially good tie-in with the Monero community and the GameStop community. There you know, was, to... but there was even in the day, it was too much degeneracy. It was too much Moaz. And yeah, yeah, I yeah, never, yeah. I never said that Binance had to close their naked shorts. I always believed they could just keep rolling them. Um, and for a period of time, I thought maybe GameStop would have to close their short, the, the shorters would have to close their, but then they proved that they didn't have to close them. They never had to close mm -hmm. those naked shorts. They could just keep rolling them forever. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's just the nature of, of financial markets. It's just a lot of people learned how dirty it is. And but I mean, still, they know uh, that the retail investor is going to pull out like pretty quickly. So like that's on their side. Yeah. Still though, GameStop on average, uh, uh, GameStop, sorry, GameStop on average is still like a 22x from where it was in 2019 and 2020. Um, you can see their their stock was kind of like, you know, their stock had really, really fell off a cliff um, during those years. It, it makes sense, right? We've got the internet now. We don't really need GameStop quite I as mean, much. I mean, like GameStop and like, what was it, like Bed Bath & Beyond, those were the two most naked shorted stocks at the time, weren't they? I didn't know Bed Bath. Interesting. Oh, but, maybe um, also AMC. Yeah, I was gonna say AMC. Oh, yeah, that was the yeah, yeah. Was there was also a there was an attempt. I mean, to I, 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 I mean, well. I, I like I like the idea that it was the little man against the the institutions, but it's just a, it's just kind of a stupid phenomenon. Yeah, I mean, there's. It, it, I mean, look at the end result: <laughs> people pumping GameStop. <laughs> like, it makes no sense. They've turned GameStop into a a, a shit coin. Yeah, it's a store yeah. of value. It's it's Bitcoin. But it doesn't even work well because like on Monday, it got halted 36 times during trading. Oh, God. <laughs> so it's not even like crypto where yeah. you can just pump, you know, it's, it gets stopped. Right. It gets game stopped. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> at least at least if like Coinbase shuts down, you could still trade. You could trade crypto on some other exchange typically. Somehow Coinbase just can't get their act together. You know, they just their servers go down under too much load when people start selling. Well, all right, guys, let's uh let's all take right. a look at gold and silver and then we'll we'll call it a day here. Gold, gold looks bullish, had a little bit of a pullback. It closed um not at all time highs, but very close to all time highs. Um and with that, it looks like the markets are now convinced that uh the markets are now convinced that that that's uh gold is in a true bull market and silver has now um has uh, outperformed to the tune of about 14%. So up here at the left, you can see XAU. So AU is gold and AG is silver, for those of you that don't know the periodic table. Um, so we're dividing gold by silver, which means that when this chart goes up, gold is winning. And when this chart goes down, silver is winning. So you'll notice that here in the past week, um, we've had uh, outperformance of silver relative to gold to the tune of about 12%. So this, probably, this is probably going to keep on um, keep on going this direction. So right now, silver's definitely should be a, a good beneficiary of the bull market in gold. Um, oh, you know, maybe we can actually, let's take a look at the actual silver price as well, because that would be a travesty to only talk about silver and relative to how good uh, it's doing with gold, we'll put on the wave magic. Um, so you'll notice the silver price here. Sorry, the silver price here has broken out of what is truly a very, very long term um, sort of capping pleb line here um started about a decade ago yeah so silver has broken out of that uh i would very much expect silver to just keep pumping to the upside here there's a solid 40 percent in in store for silver 
Um, I haven't like super analyzed this chart. So at any rate, this chart is bullish in every way possible. Like this, this chart looks, looks really good. So, um, probably your real, your last opportunity to get in would have been, um, a couple weeks ago right here at this, at this level. Um, we had kind of talked about, um, for the past few weeks that gold was now looking like in a bull market and that silver was probably going to follow at some point soon in, in terms of overperformance. That's just how that, that's just how that works. Um, so good for those of you that hold silver. Uh, I got a little bit myself, not as much as, you know, as I would like to have on based on that chart. But um, like I told you, I got burned by silver once and I said, hey, you know, I'm just going to stick with gold. Um, I'm in I'm in metal for the stability, not for the gains. I'll use crypto for gains. Um, OK, let's take a look at Dixie here. Um, my my prediction on Dixie was actually for this thing to ultimately break to the upside. Um, I was wrong. This thing broke to the downside instead, although in a way it's still kind of trying to maintain this channel. Eh, um, this channel is probably not valid anymore. It's, it probably doesn't have too much to do with the chart, but um, the Dixie breaking down a little bit here this past week is probably, you know, it's correlated with gold going up. It's correlated with um, new highs in the stock market. Um, where are they? <laughs> wah, wah. It's correlated with new highs in the stock market. Uh, S&P 500 made slightly new highs. Okay, cool. Um, just FYI. Uh, we got the um, the reverse repos have flattened out, right? So there's not new money coming out of reverse repos at the moment. Um, okay, uh, the liquidity situation. This is another one of those signs where it's like, yeah, the liquidity situation isn't doesn't feel like it should be supporting stuff, but um, we do have a, a federal government that's printing just asinine, retarded amounts of money. So uh, yeah, maybe that could just keep going for a while. Um, other than that, we got the yields. The yields don't mean anything at the moment. They're just sideways flat. Um, there's no, there's no evidence of, of approaching of, uh, imminent tail risk. And then we had some inflation numbers, uh, that came out this week. The, the, the core inflation, which is a harder one to get down, um, actually did come down a little bit. So it's sitting here at three and a half percent. Um, we got the CPI at, uh, like 3.4%. Okay. I guess, you know, that's, that's not bad. Like things are still slowly continuing to come down. I'm probably j Powell has something good to say about that. Um, this is a chart that we're going to be looking at, um, the civilian unemployment. If this thing starts spiking, that's a sign of us that for us that tail risk is, is imminent. Um, right now, this this chart looks, it's looking like it wants to get there, but it's this is a month by month chart. Every single one of these data points is a month long. So um, this chart is a slow moving chart, but um, spikes in this will be cor corroborated with our other things like the bond market and looking for tail risk. Basically, what we're looking for is an opportunity when the markets crash and everything, oh my God, the world is ending. They're going to intervene. They always intervene. They have to intervene. We're just waiting for that moment so that whatever spare cash we have, um, if you have cash or if, you, if you're like me, if you have gold, you know, sitting around for store value, um, the next time they intervene, I'm just going to go straight from everything from gold and cash into crypto, right? Into the most, um, uh, the most uh, uh, violent, um, volatile plays, the highest risk plays that are going to pay off the most, right? That's, that's just the name of the game. So anyways, um, yeah, nothing, you know, everything's still kind of steady state here. Um, things are looking towards the positive end of the spectrum. Um, although I don't see, I don't see the liquidity. Um, I, I don't see the liquidity for like massive, massive new highs, but things still like seem to be drifting in a positive direction here. So with that, um, I think that's all I got for you guys today.